We've heard a lot of, uh, at least a very concise presentation of a lot of research, and now it'll be a great joy, I think, to focus on some of the classroom applications and implications of this program. And the first of our speakers, who's really a remarkable educator and medical researcher, Dr. Serena Grosswald, is doing some extraordinary research at one of the premier schools in the country for stress-related learning disorders, including ADHD. Her recent research has been published all over the world, the International Herald Tribune, CNN, etc. Her research that shows, promises amazing results on reversing stress-related learning disorders and ADHD just through the addition of the TM program within the educational setting. Dr. Serena Grosswald is an expert in cognitive learning. She is president of S.J. Grosswald and Associates. She is director of continuing medical education for the American Medical Women's Association. She is also now the project director for a major research study now underway on the effects of the Transcendental Meditation Technique on ADHD and other learning disorders. Please welcome Dr. Serena Grosswald. Thank you. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here to tell you a little about the research that we've been doing with TM and ADHD. We've had um, a couple of studies, and ADHD is the most common developmental disorder in school-age children. About two and a half, about four and a half million children have been diagnosed with ADHD, and about two and a half million of those children are on medication. And these are very powerful drugs. They're amphetamines. We're giving our kids speed. And as I mentioned, it is a developmental disorder. And as Dr. Aaron Ander talked about dial-up versus broadband, well, these children are working at the level of string and tin can. It's just a matter of the fact that their brain is not quite as developed as their peers. But there's no objective clinical test for ADHD. It's based, the diagnosis is based on subjective inventories, inventories that are filled out by the parents and the teachers. And what studies have shown is that very bright children actually develop slower than other children. So who's to say that a six-year-old who talks while the teacher is talking has got ADHD or is just developing a little slower? Or a 10-year-old who's got 130 IQ that doesn't pay attention in class, isn't very focused, who's to say that that child has got ADHD or is just bored? When I was in school becoming an educator, we learned that people learn differently. Some learn visually, some learn auditorially, and also that people progress at different rates. But schools and teachers are under a lot of pressure today to perform, to be in certain places at certain times in the school year. And there's no room now for any student that doesn't fall into the prescribed norm of how that curriculum is supposed to go. And so if a child is not paying attention or isn't on page 42 by week six, then when that teacher fills out the questionnaire, does the child talk when the teacher's talking? Yes. Does the child have difficulty focusing? Yes. And the next thing you know, that child is diagnosed with ADHD. And there are a lot of side effects to these drugs. They create, cause insomnia. 15% of children with ADHD, diagnosed with ADHD and on ADHD medication, are also on sleeping medication. It can cause mood problems. Many of these kids are on antidepressants, antipsychotics. It can cause motor disorders. They go on medication for those things. These children are now on cocktails of medication, most of which are not approved for children. They're on adult medications that have serious long-term consequences. So we decided to take a look at what the effects of transcendental meditation would have for these children. 
Now, I will say that the medication does work for some children, doesn't work at all for some, and has severe side effects for others. That's the common general knowledge about medication. And so that's the case here. So for some children, it does work. And if you're a parent of one of these children, it's very understandable that you want to do something for your child. You want your child to succeed. You want your child to be able to pay attention and learn in school. So the, the only option that parents know is to put their child on medication. But that's why we're here, is to tell you about a, a, a very effective alternative. You saw the brainwave coherence, little brain, so I'd like to show you what we saw very specifically in our children. And people ask me all the time, can a child with ADHD really sit down and meditate? Well, yes, they can do transcendental meditation. It's a very simple, natural, easy technique, and what we found was it was very easy for these kids. This is the result. We did uh, our current randomized controlled trial. We're doing EEG measurements. And as Dr. Hagelin mentioned, this is r research is being done in the premier independent school for children with learning disabilities. So this school has a very high student-teacher ratio. They pride themselves on meeting the individual needs of the students, and they work very hard to help these children. They're very committed at that school. This is the control group, the, the group that did not experience transcendental meditation. And this is the result of the normal educational process at this very fine school. These are not individual heads, but rather they represent clusters of neural networking. So this is the increase in three months of the normal schooling that they're getting. This is the TM group. After three months, meditating 10 minutes twice a day. That's all they did, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, every day at school, and then at home on the weekends. And this is the increase in brain coherence that we saw just after three months. And what does that mean? It's very interesting, but what does that mean practically for these children? Well, what we saw was significant reductions in stress. And I did not realize that ADHD was a stress-related disorder. I don't think that's something that most people think about. But we saw 50 to 53 percent reduction in stress. 50% reduction in anxiety. These children are under a lot of stress. They're under stress to try to control their behavior, control their attention, control their focus, meet the expectations of their teachers and their parents. They know how to behave intellectually. They've been taught that. It's not that they don't know. It's that they cannot control their brains. They're not fully developed. And so when they impulsively hit the student next to them, then they know that's something they shouldn't do, and they feel bad about it. And it creates a spiral downward of their self-esteem, their stress, their anxiety. So what we saw was this significant reduction in stress, and from there, a cascading effect. And the teachers talked about anecdotally, they could see it in their body language. And the effect was that they were more open to learning. They were more responsive to learning that instead of having to be told something five or six times, they only had to be told once or twice. So major redu reductions in all of those ADHD attention-related problems. We had improvements in attention, 19% improvement in expressive attention, 13% improvement in their overall executive functioning. In general, we saw improvements in their behavior regulation, in their emotional control, in their executive functioning, in their ability to monitor themselves, in their ability to inhibit their own behavior, their me memory, their organizational skills. And we were not teaching them organizational skills. We weren't doing a, a behavioral intervention. We weren't helping them with their memory and their attention. These are the results that came spontaneous within 10 minutes twice a day. And I know that schools are pressed to try to fit in everything that they have to fit in. And we had uh, one of the teachers of the last period that was concerned about losing 10 minutes 
in her class period, expressed that in the beginning. By the end of three months, she described the fact that she said, in a 45-minute period, I might be effective half the time. She said, for the student to come back from TM, and be more focused, more attentive, sit down, get to work right away. She said, now she might, maybe only had the child for 20 minutes, but she got more teaching done in that 20 minutes than she did in the whole 45 minutes before. So just 10 minutes twice a day. And I'll just tell you a couple of very quick stories. Coming into this, I really didn't know for sure whether or not these children would be able to do TM. There's a lot of research about the benefits, and they tell me it's easy and simple, but I didn't know. So we taught all of these children in one day, and we sit down with a questionnaire to, to verify whether or not they are doing the practice correctly. So after the very first student learned, immediately after his first experience of meditating, I sat down with him and I asked him some questions and I said, so how do you feel? And he said, I feel like it's a whole different world now. This child, for the first time, having the experience of having that silence of the mind, having his mind be able to settle down to that quietness that he never gets to experience. And some other children where we look at what are the effects of that CEO coming online. Well, three weeks into the study, one child described the fact that he could now recognize when he was getting angry. And he said he could walk away half the time. So three weeks into it, he could walk away half the time. In three months, he could probably walk away 75% of the time. By the end of the school year, it may not even be a problem. And again, just very simple. They don't have to think about anything else in the course of the day, just that 10 minutes twice a day. I could tell you a lot of stories. I would love to stand up here and tell you all these stories. But what I'd like to do is give you an opportunity to hear in their own words what these children felt about their experiences with TM. We did interviews before the children learned and then three months after. So I'll just let you hear it in their words. Thank you. What I want to ask about is I want to ask about um, ADD because part of what we're doing, you know, we're going to teach kids who have ADD to meditate and see how it helps. Mm -hmm. And so I want to get a sense of, of how, how ADD affects you. Do you have ADD? Yes. Do you, you know you got it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> how can you tell? Well, when I get frustrated, I get overly frustrated sometimes. When I can't do my work, I shut down too easily. And I sometimes just have problems overall working and um, just keeping my anger under control. I can't all sit straight, like sit there for a while and not fidget. And I can't concentrate for a long time. Like I, and I can get distracted easily. It's, it sometimes it's harder for me to read and pay attention in class. Okay. And is that true at home too, or when you're trying to do homework, or? Yeah, trying to do homework is kind of tough too. Well, let me ask you about. Do you know what stress is? Yes. When you feel stress, pressured, or tense? I have a lot. <laughs> I always have a lot. <laughs> a lot of stress. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me about that. When do you, when do you feel stressed? How do you feel stressed? It's mostly when I'm doing homework. Like I said, when I do something wrong, I'm just, I could say I'm a lean, mean stress machine. It's helped me with my schoolwork, not getting as frustrated with my friends, and just not getting so angry with my parents, doing my homework better, not getting into so much fights at school, not getting people angry and stuff like that. It's kind of easier for me to focus and concentrate my energy on one thing than like going and be trying to work on one thing and then fidgeting and trying to stop that and then listen to the teacher at the same time. I'm much more calmer now than I used to be, and less hyper, and uh, much more mature than I was, and um, 
Now they want, all, all my friends want me to come over to their house. Well, I don't stress as much anymore, unless it's like with my friends or whatever, but I don't stress that much anymore. So I'm basically, what, what it's doing is, it's making me be able to focus so I'm not on, like, under stress. It makes me a lot more confident in myself because then I know that if I can't get one, like, a few things, I don't need to get stressed out about it. I just need to take a little time, go to something else, and then come back to it and work on it. It's working. It's improving their lives. It's improving their sense of self. It's it's empowering them. I mean, you can, I can say that over and over again, but I really do see it making a big difference. And I think that their futures are going to be so much brighter because of it.